Now, we're gonna dive into the how-to part of the video and we're gonna wire this thing up a little different than you would probably think. We are actually gonna solder some stuff. I've got some wire right there that's kind of special. Let me clip it and show you. So I made a video on this a while back and I just showed how to route all the wires and do everything. And one of the subscribers said, why didn't you just solder all the wires to the back? And I looked at it and I was like, dude, that's actually a really good idea. I don't know why I didn't, probably just because I'd never thought to do it or I'd never had anybody ask about it. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna take this wire, this is basically RGBWA wire. So it's got power and ground and then it's got green, blue, white, and amber or yellow. I think it's perfect for what I'm gonna do because all I need is power and ground for the main unit and then I'm going to have all of my individual outputs, which are going to be the buttons on the remote here. And then we'll talk about a little diagram so you can see exactly which wire color based on how I do it in this video is going to be used like white for A, B for yellow, whatever. I don't think that that's what it is, but we're going to do it right now. So here's how much of a nerd I am. I actually thought that this was so cool looking when you hook it all up that I even posted up a picture of it on my Instagram. A while back but this is actually gonna double as a little how-to because I'm gonna make this exact setup right here right now now we are gonna add a bunch of wires to this and do some pretty complicated weird stuff in a bit but for right now what I want to do is just prep all of the areas that I know I'm going to solder to so that is gonna be two out of three of every one of these little relays that's on here I'm just gonna add extra solder to it because I'm gonna be adding wires and all of that. So just kind of a slow, easy process. Cool. Now, I don't know if you caught the pattern, but we did two, skip one, two, skip one, two, skip one, two, skip one. And then that is our power and ground here at the end. So we do have some labeling right here, but these numbers basically don't mean anything to me. I just actually need to know what they are. So we do have power and ground here at the bottom. Ground is what we're gonna use the black wire for. Red is gonna be power, and then all of our outputs are gonna be wired to these colors, but in between now and adding all of these cool wires, we have to add something that bridges all of the power together on here. So that is what we're gonna do next. This is gonna be harder than it needs to be just because I'm so cheap that I don't wanna cut another piece of tinned wire. I already have this little piece of tinned wire here. This little connection is going to be my 12 volts and I wanna bridge that before I add all of my wires to it. So I've got 12 volts going to that one. I wanna go right to this middle unit here so it's the second connection. That's one, two, three connections for that relay. And I wanna bridge all of the middle connections on there. So we're gonna go right to this one. And we have to be careful as we go because we don't wanna bridge anything except that middle connection on each relay with the 12 volts. So I made that connection now. I'm bending it back out of the way, going around that next connection and then I wanna get it nice and tight in here. Okay, let's see how that looks. Not touching anything, it's nice and out of the way. If we want, we can even kind of bend this thing up a bit. Just kind of depends how worried you are about it. And then we're gonna make a straight path to this dude. Make sure that it's nice and connected. Not touching anything else. And it's gonna end its little journey right here at the very last relay. Now you can get super fancy with this. You can route it in a different way so that you're not gonna have anything at all in the way when you run your wires. That is all that was needed to bridge all of my little connections. Seriously, not beautiful work. It just will work. <laughs> That's all that we need. All right, so not anything too fancy. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna start with the longest wire first. We're gonna strip and tin the end of it. And then we're gonna start clipping everything exactly to length as it needs to be. So this is super clean and we can end up with the wires leaving the unit in a nice tight little bundle just like that. Okay, so it looks like the longest wire on this whole setup is going to be our yellow wire. I'm gonna cut, tin the end of that. Wow, that was not graceful. Okay, 
Okay, I'm knocking things everywhere, so I am gonna make this way easier on myself and use my quad hands because it's got four little hands and I only have two. And I'm filming with one of them. Our longest wire is this yellow one. I'm using even my little scraps of solder here. And the next step is gonna be yellow wire first. And then next, separate all the wires out. Our white wire needs to go there. I don't want it to touch that little wire that's above it. I'd like it to just be exactly to length right there. Solder that dude. Again, just make sure that you're conscious of anything that's around there. Anything to be soldered where it doesn't belong. Now it's gonna start getting pretty interesting looking on here. Number one, what we wanna make sure that we do is not bridge any wires that we're not supposed to. You can lift some of this stuff and run the wires under it, or you can do what I'm gonna do right now and leave just enough length so that I'm not worried about that wire coming into contact. I'm just gonna solder the very end of this so that the shielding, as it shrinks back from the heat, doesn't go too far down that wire. Try not to leave little points on the solder. I don't like to do that. Now we're gonna do our green wire, which we're gonna cut to length now. That needs to hit that dude. And you could do all of this ahead of time, but like, you'd be kind of guessing. So I just like to go bit by bit. Again, I don't want this to go and touch that wire that's in front of it. So I'm gonna be very, very careful. Looks good. Got two wires left, so this is gonna be my power and ground. So I will separate them, and I want ground to just do a nice right angle and go straight at it. Now we're gonna tin the ends, connect it, and then we'll do some tests to make sure that everything is working the way that it should be. Just like the other unit, I'm gonna strip power and ground, connect that up to little gator clips. Okay, now one nice thing about this is because we have all of these little units open right there, we can still use them for power and ground if we want. So, while I am just gonna hook this thing up directly like I did the Anzo setup, I've got my power and ground connected there, I can see my little LED on to tell me that everything's powered up. Hook up my ground right here and then we can check each output just by connecting it to this wire. Got power and ground hooked up. Next thing we need to do is make sure that all of our remotes are paired with this. And I'm gonna show you two different things that we can do. And then if we mess up, there's another thing that we can do. So the first is I know that if I push this button twice and then that light goes solid and I push this, now this remote is gonna be synced in latching because pushing the button twice makes it do latching. So let's take a look at what happens now when I push button A, one of those four wires should go hot. In a lot of my videos, transparency is something that maybe stands out a little bit because I'll tell you when I screw up. Something that I didn't notice that I did right now was I had this green wire pushed down and it was causing something to light up. I think I had something touching on the bottom of this green wire which was making this board send power to this when it wasn't supposed to. So it looks like green is hooked up to D and for some reason it was getting power when it wasn't supposed to. Now it looks like that's all good to go. So obviously if you do wire everything up like this, make sure when you go over it all at the end that none of that shielding has been pushed through by any of the little parts. I think it was the little solder joint right there. In any case, I can now go through all of my different connections and test. Button A looks to be yellow. Button B should be white. Button C is blue, green. Button D, go. Cool. All right, now I'm gonna show you what this looks like if we do all of that with the remote programmed as momentary. So this time with power and ground hooked up like it is right now, I'm gonna push the button only once and then it's gonna go solid. Now I'm gonna push this. Now it's paired up with this remote specifically as momentary and this remote specifically as latching. So what that means is that if I, if I wanna turn on channel D here on the remote, 
I can push it and it's just gonna stay on no matter what. I'm not pushing a button right now, right? Let me turn it off. But if I come over here now and I push D, I have to, I have to be holding the button down. If I let go, it turns off, right? It sucks because you can't blend latching and momentary because I would love to do that, but I can't. When I do my strobe remote setup, I usually leave D as the thing to change the actual mode. And for that, you really do just need a momentary button just like that. But it doesn't work that way because all the other ones I need to be latching. So I make it to where you have to push it once. So I make it so that you have to push it once and then push it a second time to basically release the button that would normally look like this on a momentary setup. Let's say that we don't like the fact that we don't have both of them as latching. Obviously one of them is gonna act different than the other. So we're gonna go ahead and push this button now eight times and that, as soon as it goes solid, is gonna let us know that both of these have now been erased. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's gonna confirm and then these aren't gonna do anything anymore. one's got a snappier sound to it. It's all snappy. And this time, if I push the button twice, and now I push this button, now we're good. I'm gonna push the button twice again. Push the button over here. And now both of them are gonna be latching. Pretty interesting how that works too where you can have one do turning on and the other one doing turning off but they're both now hooked up to the two button push on here it's synced up everything good to go and I don't have a bunch of crazy ugly wiring coming from this what I can do is remove this put this thing on its cute little case notice it doesn't sit super flush down with the bottom which means if I was worried about any wires being pinched I'm not now Last little thing, you can see that little notch. That notch goes where this comes out, which is perfectly in line with that. Look how pretty. That is just beautiful. So here's an example of if I wanted to hook everything up just using these wires now, since I know I don't have to program anything, I don't have to have that thing open anymore. Power to red, ground to black. We're in business. Weeds in business. Cool. Shameless plug, those are the dope little Flyride T15 bulbs. That is our Anzo USA remote control and then the Kia chip. So let me know, which one did you like better? DIY style where you have to do all that wiring yourself or the ready to go right out of the box Anzo USA. Links to my favorite stuff, quad hands, awesome. Definitely helps me with all my soldering. We've got our lovely Milwaukee drills and all of this stuff will be linked up in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought about this format. And if you want me to do more comparisons, this versus that type stuff, I'll see you next time.